Welcome everybody to Crypto Mastery Class, where we make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. We're going to look at the news, the overall market today, hot movers in the basket, indicators, and most importantly, we're going to look at the live charts and take your question and answers. So today on the news, Solana drops towards $40. Here's the next major support. This is by Duo on CryptoPotato.com. Solana had a good attempt at escaping from its ascending trial, but failed. Now the price is approaching the key support. Solana was quickly pushed back by the sellers as soon as its price tried to move above the key resistance at $44. The price is now falling towards the key support at $35. If the cryptocurrency drops below the ascending triangle, then the bullish momentum will be compromised and the correction could become more severe. Since the price is approaching the apex of this formation, there's not much room left for the price to move until a clear break happens. The volume is in red, but failing, I'm sorry, but falling. Sellers appear to be losing interest as the price moved lower. The daily RSI made a lower high, and if it also makes a lower low, then we could witness a change in the overall trend. The daily MACD is dangerously close to a bearish cross. If this happens, then the price is likely to fall back on the support and lose its uptrend. The short-term bias for Sol SOL is bearish. Sol's price is quickly approaching a critical level. If buyers cannot stop the downtrend at $38, then the price will lose its bullish momentum and enter a more significant correction. Key supports are found at $34 and $27. Expect more volatility as the week progresses. So my takeaway from Solana is the volatility is amazing in crypto. So for the people that are shorting the market, very exciting for the people that are buying. Safety time. Hold your horses. Polkadot. Price analysis. Oh, and by the way, nothing on this is financial advice. This is just for tutorial purposes. Polkadot Price Analysis, August 2nd, by Siana on the newscrypto.com. Polkadot, it's known as DOT. DOT is a native cryptocurrency of Polkadot. A blockchain interoperability system protocol was established in 2016. It is a shared blockchain, which means that many different chains are connected to the same network which allows them to process and transfer data between chains in parallel without sacrificing security. DOT price analysis on August 2nd, 2022 is explained below within a daily time frame. An ascending channel is defined as the price action contained between two parallel upward sloping lines. This price pattern is distinguished by higher highs and lower lows. An ascending channel is created by drawing a lower trend line that connects the swing lows and an upper channel line that connects the swing highs. Price does not always remain entirely formed within the parallel lines of an ascending channel, but instead shows areas of support and resistance that traders can use to set stop loss orders and profit targets. A breakout above an ascending channel may indicate a continuation of the upward trend, whereas a breakdown below an ascending channel may indicate a change in the trend. Currently, the price of DOT is $7.83. If the pattern continues, the price of DOT might reach the resistance level of $9.69 and buy level of $8.80. If the trend reverses, then the price of DOT may fall to $7.46 and a sell level of $8.37. Currently, DOT is in a bearish state. However, the DOT price slightly lies above the 50 MA short term, but lies below the 20 MA long term. Henceforth, when DOT completely moves above the 50 and 200 MA, then it is said to be a bullish trend. Therefore, there is a possibility of a reversal trend of DOT at any time. So that is some good information for my people that are in the 
acquisition stages and they're looking for something that has a great potential of upward movement. Now, on a secure situation, I wanted you to know this article just because it's always good to keep up with who we're using to buy and sell our crypto from. So Robinhood Crypto hand, was handed a $30 million fine by a New York regulator. This is by Chris Williams on CryptoBriefing.com. Robinhood's crypto arm has been served a $30 million slap on the wrist, the Wall Street Journal has reported. According to a Tuesday report, the New York State Department of Financial Services has fined crypt Robinhood Crypto on allegations it broke anti-money laundering and cybersecurity regulations. It's the first time NYDFS has stepped in to reprimand a crypto entity. According to the report, NYDFS said that Robinhood Crypto failed to maintain the standards required to stay compliant with anti-money laundering and cybersecurity programs given the size of its company. In addition to the $30 million penalty, the firm will now have to hire an independent consultant to ensure it meets the NYDFS's regulatory requirements. NYDFS reportedly found failings in crypto in Robinhood Crypto's operation when it conducted a supervisory exam and ensuing enforcement investigation. According to the report, the regulator pointed to mismanagement in the company and a lack of regard for compliance practices, including a misallocation of resources to compliance programs and failure to create a culture of compliance. The regulator also said Robinhood Crypto failed to meet its cybersecurity and virtual currency guidelines or address its operational risks. Robinhood disclosed the investigation in an SEC filing in 2021 when it was experiencing rapid growth amid, the bo amid a boom in demand for stocks and crypto assets. NYDFS reportedly said that the company's issues became more of a problem as it scaled. Robinhood last raised $3.4 billion in early 2021 from a host of major venture players like Sequoia and Andreessen Horowitz and made its public debut on NASDAQ in July 2021. It became more involved in crypto as the space boomed, eventually launching an arm dedicated to digital assets called Robinhood Crypto. However, it has suffered in 2022 amid a months long downturn that's hit blockchain and technology focused companies alike. Its revenue plummeted by almost 50% in the first quarter of the year, and it's since joined a growing list of tech firms to announce company layoffs. Robinhood Crypto has not yet publicly commented on NYDFS's fine. So now let's look at the overall market for Bitcoin and Ethereum market cap also. So for the overall market cap of total cryptocurrency, we're currently at 1, 1 trillion 55 billion. And what you're looking at is a seven day chart. And so you can see last week at this time, we were at 950 billion. And you can see the slowly progression that we've had in the last seven days. And that little dip where we had some very quick sell and then buy back on August 2nd, just early this morning. And there we are right now at 1 trillion 55 billion. So it's always a good thing to see us above that trillion dollar mark. I'm happy for that. So this is for my visual learners. Coin 360 today for the seven day analysis. You're looking at the one week performance in market cap block size. I want to take note that there's three shades of red and three shades of green. Today, we're going to focus on the green shades. So if you take your eyes and look at BNB, what's happening with BNB, it's the darkest shade of green. And that means that the price went up three steps. So in the last seven days, BNB went up 15.14%. Now take your eyes and look at the Ethereum box. And notice that it is the second largest box. That means that the box size, when it says the market cap block size, it represents that of all the money in crypto, 
Ethereum has the second largest amount invested in it. The first is Bitcoin, and thus is why we call Ethereum the queen. So Ethereum in the last week went up two steps. That's why it's the second shade of green, and that's at 11.94% in the last seven days. And then take your eyes and look at Cardano, which is the ADA. It's light green, and the price went up one step. So it went up 4.7% in the last seven days. So you can find that on cointhrixy.com and there's multiple drop downs that you can choose in time frames. And again, this is great for the visual learners that just want to have a, another quick preview any time of the day, night, 24 hours. You want to see kind of where the market is and what is up and what is down. Where can you take profit and where do you want to buy? So we're going to use cryptomastery.online indicators now. So if you want to subscribe to the above URL, just go to cryptomastery.online. And here we have Bitcoin USD one week performance chart with the Crypto Mastery indicators, which is what you'll get in the members area. So here is Bitcoin and you have the early reversal. This is the one week chart. Just so you know, and I took this screenshot at 11.09 Eastern Standard Time today. So this early reversal came in in April on a one week analysis basis. And clearly it came in and it went down. So we're waiting for another early reversal indicator to come in. It hasn't come in yet. The average true range is that thicker red line and the red shading. And that is still in a downward trajectory or pattern. The second, well, those are two indicators overlaid on each other. The next set of indicators you're gonna see in the second frame down is the trend indicator. And that has a key and a bell and then a one, two, three, confirming the trend direction. Currently for Bitcoin, it's still in a downward trajectory on a one week analysis. Then to the right, you see the radar. Love this indicator. This is showing that Bitcoin for the 60 minutes the one hour is trending upward. On the four hour or 240 minute average, it's moving upward. But on the one day average, it's still trending downward. But we do have the one week average is trending upward. So the radar is a significant indicator that really transforms your chart from having to have multiple screens when you're wanting to do a deep down analysis of a coin. And that radar is priceless because at this point, we are currently looking at four different charts on one screen. It's phenomenal, especially if you're running your world on a laptop anywhere in the world, you definitely want that radar with you at all times if you're trying to win <laughs> in your trades. The next indicator is the TSI, and that stands for Trend Strength Indicator. And what you see on this one for Bitcoin right now is in the last three weeks, it's been trending upward with the Trend Strength Indicator. So the Trend Strength is saying that momentum is coming. Keep an eye. Looks like things are going up. Notice that on that Trend Strength Indicator, it's in the lower area. And so what's exciting about that, meaning that you have all the room to grow up into the blue zone. So for my people in the acquisition mode, it's a good sign. You can Some people just like to buy it and forget about it. And that's a good sign when it's in that lower green area. So for acquisitioning. Now, the signal line is in a great place. The but, the little, the little dot just came up this week. So that's exciting. So the signal line is showing that Bitcoin is looking to be moving upward. My favorite indicator, I love this, the volatility index. This is beautiful. And the volatility index on a one week average is at a 10.49. Why am I super excited about this with Bitcoin? It's because why you I know that when I'm scooping it up in this range that there is only the sky is the limit on this one. So it's it's at the floor. So you're going to see in the next slide, Ethereum. Ethereum is currently at an 18 volatility index. So I'm super excited because I'm in the acquisition mode as if I've, I've stable coined a lot of my coins up. So I'm still waiting to get back in. So things are looking good for Bitcoin. Just needing a few more indicators to hop in. Um, and, and I go in on multiple stages and multiple indicators. So that volatility index is exactly where I want it to be for acquisitioning. 
All right, so now we have Ethereum USD one week performance chart with crypto mastery indicators. So on the early reversal indicator, nothing has come up saying, hey, Ethereum's coming back up. So we're still waiting on that one. The average true range is still saying, hmm, nope, Ethereum's still in the downward trajectory. But the trend indicator is finding something. It found a key. So the trend is saying, hey, there's a key opportunity coming. And what's beautiful about all of these indicators collectively is that when they're all in line, that's the time. All right, I'm gonna say it again. When all the indicators are in line, that's the prime time. So depending on your risk level, and you need to know your risk level and your tolerance level of time, your time tolerance, you know, sometimes I like to be a little risky. So even though all the indicators may not be in line, they may jump in on that key. So it's your choice, your tolerance, your risk, and your stamina. How long can you stay in the market in the event that it changes direction, right? But if you are safety, 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 and you need everything perfect, then you wait for all of them to be in line. So it's your choice, your tolerance, your stamina. So the TSI, the trend strength, the shell link that Ethereum is in an upward trajectory for four weeks. So that is what is happening with those four little arrows upward. Now the signal line on Ethereum is showing that about probably a week ago that the signal line crossed and it went with a green dot. So it means that we have a upward movement. Now the volatility index I mentioned in Bitcoin was about 10 and volatility index in Ethereum right now is 18. This is not normal for both of these to be into this low, low range, which is super exciting. Again, when you're in acquisition mode, it means we've got the floor. Houston, there is a floor. And so, but the thing is, is with Ethereum, it's very close to that 20. So it's most likely going to break out of the oversold range. And therefore, price will be moving up. So very exciting. Again, if you're in the acquisition stage, things are looking good for Ethereum. All right. So we have the basket, which has Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, Solana. And most of these coins can be found on Coinbase. So I'm going to show you some hot movers in the basket I found today. So I organized my charts by what was trending on that radar for a one day and a one week in an upward trajectory. The only ones I found on my Coinbase watch list that were going up continue, like simultaneously, so the green was in the day and the green was in the one week, was NMR, CRO, RGT, SHIB, API 13, AP 13, API 3, um, COMP, C-O-M-P, J-A-S-M-Y, X-T-Z, A-L-G-O, B-A-T, M-A-N-A, and G-A-L-A. And those are all with USD. Amongst those, the ones that are currently for the moment still moving upward are NMR, CRO, and RGT. Now, in the lower zone, you see it says red. And the red means that the one week and the one day were not both in the upward green area on the radar. So, but amongst those that are not in the consistent green for the day and the week, they still are having momentum of upward movement. So amongst those are Ethereum USDC, Ethereum Classic, which is ETC USD, SHPING USD, Bitcoin USDC, and CRV USD. So just a little heads up on the watch list coins for the moment, you can inside of TradingView, you can organize your watch list by change percentage. And that's what this is organized by, the change percentage. And then you can um, amount of change in price the last price, the symbol name. And you can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what is ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell. 
And these coins are up for the day, but I do always look for coins on the floor to be ready for my next low buy. So I want to show you on the crypto screen or inside a trading view, I have this filtered by my green flag. And then I went to crypto screener and I clicked percentage change. So I wanted to see what's really up right now because sometimes um, people will go and they'll buy a plethora of coins just because they were all on the upward trajectory. And if you're one of those types of people, then you think, wow, I have 50 coins in my in my um, in my crypto account. So I want to see you know, and you may only have those coins flagged a certain color. You can analyze your own portfolio this way. You may want to just quickly click on the change every day or, you know, every hour, whatever your trading time frame is and say, well, what is up right now? And so if you have currently GST, USDT in your portfolio, it's up 20%. And the crypto screener is saying, their technical rating in this is saying sell. So I just want to take that time to let you guys know that GST is up 20%. The crypto screener is saying, great time to sell. I'm just going to say, good time. You always want to take profit. You don't really make anything unless you sell it, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you just sit there and look at it and then look at it and look at it, then it doesn't matter if it says that you made money. You don't make money <laughs> unless you actually take profit. So um, if you're like me, you get attached to things, but you got to let them go. You got to sell. All right, and then the other way you can filter the crypto screener is you can go to filters and click on exchange and you could filter by exchange too. And then in the members area, you're gonna get a more deep dive on these screens and to see how you can use a crypto screener and you can just go to cryptomastery.com, I mean, I'm sorry, cryptomastery.online to get more in-depth training. So these are some indicators that you will see in the in-depth training and you'll see more description about these slides inside the members area i just want to give you a little preview of a little bit of what you'll see in the members area of cryptomastery.online but for today we're just going to give you a little bit of that and most importantly q a and we're going to go into our live charts and talk to joe so joe i'd love you to come on with us and talk to our attendees today and this is the time when you guys please put your questions in the questions box because we're here to teach you and let you know um, what is hot to buy what is ripe and ready to sell if it's in your portfolio and this is the most important time to really get into the market and see what's going on in there so um, no questions yet joe so let's just jump on and you and i can go through the market together and hopefully it'll trigger some questions with the attendees today. Julie, Margaret, Peter, Richard, Stella, be great to see you guys ask some questions. And um, if you guys don't know how to do it, you just go click in the questions box on your uh, go to webinar area. So Joe, what do you think about that market today? Hi Susie, how's it going? Hi everyone. Great. Um, I think the, the markets right now are kind of getting uh, uh, high volatility because of how everything's positioned on the uh, on the big picture on the weekly charts. And uh, this Friday is uh, more economical data coming out, so I, I suspect uh, that we're going to, you know, move out of this trading range coming up. What's so the data? I, I'm that's... expecting that. Oh, sorry. Well, it's the uh, on Friday is the unemployment data report that comes out, so it's. Uh, you know, and this Bitcoin has also uh, been following along with the market. So basically, this economical uh, report that comes out, it's Friday morning at 8.30, the first Friday of each month. And uh, this is going to, um, should push things out of this trading range. You know, so right now on the charts, there's a lot of uh, consolidation. And there's also some different case points where you should be taking profits. So like if you were to change that chart to the Ethereum, just wanted to point out a couple of things. Yeah, you know, with that unemployment, with those articles I just revealed and how there a lot of the crypto space is having to lay people off. I mean, do you think that this 
these regulatory systems attacking the crypto industry and having Coinbase now and Robinhood both having to cut jobs. And I know that's only two companies, but do you think that'll impact that unemployment to a significant degree that would uh, participate in the, the unemployment trajectory going into a, in a, bad, a worse zone? Well, maybe. <laughs> But I, I think a lot of right now, everything is worked into the charts, you know, and I think okay. there's a, a couple wild cards that just unknowns, you know, such as this, uh, like right now, like the, what's going on with the war, it, you know, it's an unknown. If there was any type of ceasefire, right away, I think you're going to see, you can see all these markets really uh, have massive short covering. Um, but right now, <clears throat> all the markets are, have this energy factor which is looming on there. So I think that, uh, you know, it's a kind of, kind of a combination of uh, multiple factors to where we are. But one of the things in particular is if you notice that uh, how we're oversold on these weekly charts. So it means that we don't have to go all the way down and start making new lower lows, but it's uh, promising that the bottom, uh, short-term bottom is in place. So the question is, is uh, do we have enough uh, momentum to actually move out of this trading range? So when you take a look here, I, I just wanted to point out, if, if you look at the volatility index, how that's oversold, and uh, also how the signal line is. Yeah. There's a signal line. Yeah. So what happens here is, is that uh, each week, this is a weekly chart. And each week um, on Sunday, the weekly bar finally completes itself. So right now we're looking at the, the completion uh, from Sunday, Sunday's bar. Now, Susie, really one of the good things. Oh, go yeah. ahead. Well, we're one of the things I in just particular. Want to guys, I want to say this, guys we're in a great place <laughs> as far as an acquisition. So if somebody wanted to get into crypto, I would say this is the time to be learning this. I mean, look at this chart, we're so low. I mean, do you wanna comment on that? Joe, do you have anything to say? Or does anybody, like, does everybody understand how amazing this is if you're just now getting in noting that in 2017 the signal line wasn't ever that low i don't know Jared, do you want to comment on that what do you think oh well look it's uh it's taken in here um if you look at it since the beginning of the year there's just only about four months to finish the year or you know uh in place so for the last uh eight months We've been, um, you know, we, we've been in this downtrend. So I think that uh, we're starting to come to the to this bottom that's taken place. And when these weeklies turn, Susie, they turn in here for weeks. So I, I think yeah, that's something look in here. Momentum. So guys, you could always come to your charts, and if you just want to do some deeper analysis to, to really figure out if this is the right thing for you, because everyone, like I said earlier, has a different risk tolerance. And, you know, you, you may be sitting, like I have one client that just inherit, you know, inherited a lot of money and he's sitting on 120,000 and he's worried it's going to run out. And it's like, oh my goodness, this gentleman does, doesn't even have it in the market yet. And I thought, oh, oh, <laughs> you know, he could have like multiplied that so much, but then again, he doesn't have the education enough to be trading. But, but if somebody had put something like that in the market down here on November, uh november and and if they knew what they were doing and they could have multiplied that hundred thousand dollars one thousand two hundred and thirty eight percent and you could be sitting with a million dollars now right that's about a 12 times amount right 1.2 million and to say you're probably paying about a two hundred thousand in taxes so that's within a year that's november 2020 to May 2021. So I think what Joe is just saying is that what it does get in that upward momentum, and you do have those indicators that are all in sync on a longer, longer term process than 
you could access a nice upward wave like that. Go ahead, Joe. I, I don't want to. I'm sorry if I interrupt you, but I, I did get excited when I see that we're this down and that we could be on a good upward momentum. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Joe. You know, I, I, well, what I, I would like to do is is that uh, why don't we um, go over to the watch list and then you know kind of go through the different uh, coins um, and organize the watch list with the radar. And then we can see what's moving on the uh, the weekly, what's green on the weekly. So I already so there... did that, Jeff. I, I did that oh. because in order to do the what's hot slide, I have to organize it before I take that photo for the keynote presentation. So they're all done, but if you want me to quickly go through, um, I'll click on all of them, guys. And what Joe is wanting you to do, and if anybody here doesn't know how to make a watch list, let us know because this is an interactive portion of the class today and I want to make certain that all of you, Julie, Margaret, Peter, Richard, Rob, Stella, that you all know how to create your watch list. So this is the day and this is the week and that arrow is saying, you know, I'm on a one week chart, but it doesn't matter whatever I'm on, it's still going to be the same thing, whatever chart this is. So what I'm looking at as I click on each one of these coins is, is the day green and the arrow up and is the week green and the arrow up. So I'm going to click and it'll take a second for everything to show up, but we're just confirming that this is still in compliance with upward direction. I guess I shouldn't say compliance, it's saying that this is still upward. So just keep your eyes on the D and the W. And then when you see that, I click on my flag. Oop, so Yasmin changed. Okay, so now that's red. So I'm going to click on that and drag it down to my red zone. Oh, well, I apologize. I guess things can change like within time frames. I mean, I just did this. Interesting. All right. So those are my grains. So let's go back and see. So what you're seeing is this is red because the day and the week are not both green. So I was thinking we could make a third line where they're both down for the people that are international that are actually shorting or people that are looking for acquisition coins because then we know that there's going to be a good floor when everything is down. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. You should um, add it in now. So if there's anything in there, you can just put okay. that at the bottom. So, you know. So what I'm going to do is we'll say, you, to create a section, guys, we just uh, actually click on one of the coins and say add a section. And then you click on it and make you right. I'm going to say all red. And then we'll call her this combo. Does that make sense to all of you guys? So I'll quickly organize these. So, Joe, for the combo, I'm going to color that yellow. Is that okay with you? Because it's yeah, like a fine. hazard. Or I guess we don't have yellow, so I'll do an orange. So what I'm going to do orange is when the day and the week are multiple colors. And then, Joe, what would you recommend for everybody that for the combo coins versus the red coins? Or you can just talk to them about something while I'm, I'm organizing this. So I was just trying to figure out something that you could say. Or if you guys have any questions for Joe, Please put it in the questions box. And so while I'm going through these, Joe can <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, you. what we want to do is just see if there's anything that's all red at all. I mean, there might not be anything that's all red. That one was that S H I S H P I N G. You know, the, the whole purpose of organizing so, your watch list is to spend the time on the coins that are moving. So um, it's a, it's interesting it's how fast you can just maneuver through the exchange with the radar. 
and my process my thought process with if you're looking at something that's completely red that's a great one to be looking at because the closer you get to that floor the more chance of a larger upward swing if you have a nice volatile coin that constantly moves to me it's just like an ultimate score of like this one see it's totally trajectory down and sometimes there's there's certain times in places where you're going to want to know when it's completely all going down because in the united states we can't short crypto but other countries can and guys remember this is a zero sum loss so wherever you can make money make the money take profit but there is there, you will find places and times where the double red will bring you rewards so that's the significance see oh my gosh these things are changing so that one is a double green very exciting or quadruple green <laughs> so i'm just keep on going through combo joe is there anything that you want to let them know any any statistics or something that you want to tell them about well i'm just uh watching you um and getting things uh you know getting things organized and then we can take a look at which is the the top point and do you think again i'd love to be able to go in there and show them what is ripe and ready to buy and um what is nice and close to the floor okay all right so we're going to change this we're going to make combo um this one and i'll pull the all reds down to the bottom because and and like to know out of everybody here who is in the acquisition mode where they're looking to buy today and who is looking for something that they're looking to sell so if you have crypto right now please let us know in the questions box and you may be wondering is it time to sell it and if so let us know which one it is so that we can look that up and if you're in the acquisition mode and you're just looking as to what's ripe and ready to buy let us know that too and we'll look at those coins and to see what is ready to acquire and then also let me know if you're acquiring something for a short term like the, just the next hour or if you want to get in and out in today or if you're looking to get in and out in a week or if you are someone that has long-term stamina and you're looking to get something now and hold it for uh, a month or a year so it would be great to know i just need to know what you're looking for okay richard said i'm always looking to buy all right so richard are you in the United States? Can you um, buy or sell the market? And what exchange do you like to use? And are you a short-term or a long-term purchase today? Because everybody's portfolios are diversified in multiple realms. So if your portfolio is just designed to make money to buy pizza on Friday, let me know. Or if you're looking to accumulate enough funds to buy a property or house then let us know because there are multipliers out there you know what are your long-term goals it's a lot of questions i'm throwing at you so anything that you could let us know so that we can direct our attention to something to support you all right so richard said in the u.s in different exchanges okay so now richard i need to know are you a short term or long term so do you have the time to sit and look at the chart and just swing trade on a daily basis or are you someone that needs to pace yourself and maybe get in and out on a week chart or you may even need to just you really have a busy schedule and you don't have time to look at this but once a month or something and you may want to trade on a month chart so richard for your time right now are you more of a an hourly a weekly or a monthly trader so Richard said, any short-term transactions I have done on Coinbase Pro, wish I could short the market. I know, you can buy land in Mexico. <laughs> well, they can short the market. Um, I'm sorry, but yeah, welcome to America. Um, so, all right, so yes, I agree. I wish I could short the market too. 
maybe maybe with your crypto gains you can go buy um, a six month and one day property that you can live in another country malta go to malta um all right so joe that's our, our, our requirements today so joe you ready for this here's your challenge joe our challenge today is short-term transactions from coinbase and swing trading for now you ready joe <laughs> yes <laughs> all right there's well, our be... challenge all right so for a short-term swing trade buy on coinbase so we're on the right exchange watch list and um, so he's looking for a buy so i'm going to just make this watch just a little bigger and thus you know joe that's where the double red you know what I should call this? I'm going to say double red. Double red, one day, one week. Wow. So, all right. So he didn't say he's looking for taking profit, but that's what's most likely happening here since these guys were going up. But all right, so Joe, there you go. You ready for the challenge? We're looking for a <laughs> short term swing trade buy that he can scoop up right now and put a sell in. So he could buy it now and then put a sell order in to sell maybe um, today. Something where we were looking at. So then we should be looking at the one day chart, right, Joe? Well, I'm, what we want to do is is, is uh, we organize the watch list. So let's go on the watch list and take a look at the ones, the products that the market is all green on. I mean, it might okay. be too late or maybe it might be too early. I mean, it might be just on time. So should I be looking at, you want to look at the one hour chart? Because if he wants to get in and out, well, let, let's just confirm with Richard. Richard, do you want to get in and out today? And here's the thing, on the short term trend trading, your percentage of earnings are a lot lower than if it was a one well, day. It, it all depends a, on how long how long you're looking, you know, to to position yourself. So when you take a look only, at the daily only day. Yeah. He wants to get in today and out today, I think. So here's one, uh, this one, NMR went up 20% in eight hours. That'd be a good one. But, oh, he said, no, no, I'm not a day trader. Okay, all right. So give me one second, Joe. We have to sort it out with Richard. So Richard, when you say short term, to me, that means one hour, two hours, four hours. So okay, let's define short term with you on your terms. So when you say short term, does that mean you're wanting to get in? in an hour or in a minute and out in like 10 minutes? Or are you saying you wanna get in today and out on Friday? So therefore, cause we, we need to define if you're gonna be sitting and looking at the market constantly for the next like hour or two hours, or if you're just gonna be trading on a day chart or a one hour, a five minute chart. So type, are you wanting to to trade with a one hour or a one day or a one week basis? Guys, I'm sorry, he's not replying. Um, he said, not at all, days to couple of weeks max. Okay, so then, then I would say he is gonna be more of a day chart. I would put him on a day chart. Joe, what would you put him on? The day chart is one of the best time frames to be on because the thing is, is that, you know, would you rather be a winner for an hour or be a winner all month? It's all stamina, time duration, all these charts. I mean, the the tools work on any time frame. I mean, I got one of my best friends. He trades the one minute chart. This guy's like a pro and I watch him and he gets in there. But he has the stomach for it. I've been doing this for 25 years. I still don't have the stomach to be on a one-minute chart. You know, I, I'm more uh, um, a surfer type of guy, you know, whereas that when I get on that wave, I want to ride the wave. I, I'm not interested in, in getting out right away. 
if you got a watermelon, I don't want a piece. I want the, the, the chunk in between. That's how I like the trade. I'm the exact opposite, Joe. I'm a one minute girl. I'm like, I want to get in and out and then I want to go about my day and play. <laughs> I, I am definitely a one minute trader. <laughs> but but I, I'm glad we would probably balance each other out. But this is good. I, I want everybody to keep learning as the one week. It, either way, it's just as long as you know the patterns, you can do multiple times. As long as the indicators work for whatever time range you're looking for. All right, so let's go in. So Richard, so right now on NMR, this is an example with the one day chart. If you would have gotten in on June 29, 2022 and gotten out at that high of the candlestick wick, on July 31st, 2022, it would have went up 221% in 32 days. Okay, so Joe, let's do it. I'm gonna just sit back and, and you tell me where you want me to go to and we'll let you do the leading on this one, okay? Well, I, I mean, look, when we take a look at this coin right here, it looks like to me like it may or may not keep going like i don't see anything fresh see what i like to do when i trade and uh i utilize the tools i look to try to catch something in motion so in my opinion this is one here that when i look at the tsi it looks like on the 19th the tsi gave its first green dot right and that was the beginning of something nice but when I look at this, I see like, okay, you know, um, it's already been in play. It could, it may or may not go higher, but it's just a matter of how you want to position yourself with the tools. So if I'm looking for something to get in right away, I want to try to put myself in the best position possible when I have the most odds in my favor is to have success. So the first thing I look at is the TSI. So if you look at today, the TSI, is all the way up there by the blue. The, the blue, that's considered the overbought zone. So it's already starting to get into that area where it's not most favorable, where I have more odds in my favor. Like when the TSI gave its first green dot on a scale from one out of 10, I maybe had like an eight that the market was gonna turn up, but now, Look how much time has expired since the 19th. It's almost 30 days. Um, it looks like on that cycle, where right now it, it may have went its, its time duration. So you know the radar helps organize, and the ra radar confirms the market trajectory. It's just like a GPS. But at the same time, once the market reaches its destination and and it's really once that TSI gets all the way up to the overbroad zone, it's always going to be questionable whether or not the market keeps going. So to me, this in particular on a scale out of one out of 10, I, I would rate this like maybe a three because the TSI is just getting into the, uh, the blue zone. And uh, I mean, it may or may not go higher. Like, like I'm just looking for things that are fast in the beginning. Now, now, when I say that I want to ride the trend out, I want to be a big winner. But I want to make smart decisions being a big winner. So I, I want to put some put myself in a position where I see something in there that's attractive. Like for instance, right? Um, if uh, just saying here something that looks interesting to me right now, like if you put that on Mano. Uh, ETH. Is it mana? Yeah. Sorry. Ooh. Okay. So to me, this is something that's sexy, right? You got the the ERI yesterday. It triggered, and then today we got a bell alert. And then we're on the, the, the second dot on the TSI, the signal line crossed, the, the volatility index is still down there on the 20. So I look for things in there like this to me is attractive to me. Um, 
uh, I, you know, uh, when I'm playing the game. So it's just a matter of how you're able to position yourself when these opportunities occur. So there's going to be some opportunities which already have been in play, and then there's going to be other opportunities which is just are going to everything is going to look right, and um, and it's still not guaranteed to win. So you know, all this stuff can be in our favor, and there's still that one percent chance that it's it's just not going to happen right now. It's not ready. But then there's that other large percent that hey, you did everything right. Um, now, you, you know, you have to let things take, take into fruition. And it's called manifesto. But to me, that right there is interesting um, in the short term. So do you, do you mind? I, I know you're, you're in charge at this moment, but can we look at the past performance? Because this is pretty exciting. Like when the last sure. time all stars were aligned, what happened? which is exciting. Look look how long that uh, average true range lasted from here to here. Wait, let me get that. What, now I'm using the ruler, guys, so that we can look at to the last time the average true range was triggered. So it went up 98% in 63 days. Or... The TSI went from here to there, 61% in 47 days. Anything else you want to say about it, Joe? Sorry, I was just curious. This is exciting no, well, to see well, that. It's, it's, well, this is going to be interesting because if you see the Kelter band, it's right in the, at the middle of the Kelter band, right? So, um, you know, it, it, we might get a pop, and then maybe on the next leg we go and um, and go test that. So if Richard was to go and scoop a little bit of this up and he, he went ahead and, and got in at, it, we can't give financial advice, Richard, but 0. 0.0006. So this is, you're buying it with Ethereum, guys. So I just want you to know that the prices that you're seeing to the right are Ethereum cost. Or or actually, no, it's, it's, it's you're using Ethereum to buy mana. So this is the cost of, Mana, sorry about that. Is it Joe? So explain that to me. I'm so sorry, guys. Well, is this that, your... the, 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 you have mana. This is just a pair. So you also like you have mana Ethereum and you have mana uh, Bitcoin. You have mana Dollar. Um, this one in particular is mana Ethereum. And generally, you know right. when this moves you'll get a shift in uh money flow on the ethereum so it tells me in there that everything is kind of like um the next uh, uh you know kind of positioning themselves uh with for that report that's coming out the next couple of days nice so just to give you guys a heads up mana's cost is a dollar right now m-a-n-a -A. So what the price you're seeing right here is because you're purchasing it with Ethereum, that's the amount of Ethereum that you have to use to buy mana. I just don't want you guys to think that that's the USD price. And then when you're trying to figure out all your your monetization conversions, you're going to say, say, oh, my gosh, I thought that was like a fraction of a penny. But that's not the correct price at this point. And even though mana is at a dollar on um, Cost wise, it's not a stable coin. So don't let that make you think that's a stable coin. It's not. It just happens to be a dollar at the moment. All right. So I just wanted to explain that, Joe, because when I first started crypto trading, the conversion of crypto to one crypto, especially with this pair trading, it can get just mathematically confusing. And I just didn't want that to defer you from from jumping in on these combinations and these different, uh, you know, conversions. All right, so is yeah. there anything so, else you want to say? So, so Joe well, is saying, well, like, uh, here, and then and would you sell, would you put a sell order for something like this on the, the upper Keltler band? No, what, what I just, if you, um, if you take a look on here at the, uh, the trend, right? 
I just want to just point out this, is that right now we have a bell alert, okay? And, it, and if you can, um, I, I just want to show in here what we're looking for. So if you can uh, bring that back, Susie. Everything? Uh, you know, just to the oh. indicators. Yeah, I, I just wanted to go to a similar, uh, go jump to another market. If you could bring okay. that back. Like everything? Yeah. I just wanted okay. to just show that what we're looking for is follow through from the bell alert right now. And that's on the trend indicator. And if we were to go in here to another market, which it looks similar to this setup, uh, which is CRO, USD. Yeah, that's going up. Okay, and I just want to show in here what, what could possibly happen after the bell alert. So this is what I, my expectation is, is, is that right now we have a bell alert on that market. And then what I look for is the follow through, which is the numerical count after the bell. So on this example, we had a couple of things. We had... And Susie, if you bring that back a second with the four charts, right? What I just wanted to point out first is, is that the ERI that come in. Yeah, right here it came in. I'm just going to do a vertical line, guys. You can do this so it goes through all your indicators. So the early reversal indicator came in July 27th. Yeah, and, and that ERI came in right on the bell alert. So what I also wanted to point out is that sometimes um, the mathematics, you'll get like a double confirmation. And when you get a double confirmation, that's more odds that uh, you should see follow through from the market. You know, and, so and how far did that move? Like uh, yeah. Well, well I was just, just going to ask, up. how much in percentage did that move the, from that move? So in six days, it went up 27.99%. So almost 28% in six days. Yeah. And, and you see, that's how important the ERI is. And that's also how important the bell alert is. Because the, the, the bell alert, you know, you're looking for that confirmation afterwards. So the next couple of days right now become really important on the mana ethereum because you know what could possibly happen is is that we'll get a new number count and you know it could possibly uh move up higher to them levels i want to notate one more thing joe to just confirm what you're saying is also the signal line popped up on that same day so the signal line dot came up so that's an an amazing momentum uh, find to say, wow, signal line the same day. The only thing that didn't happen is TSI did not happen that day, but it happened the next day in the bell and the ERI. Now, it was above the volatility index, and CRO is a very popular coin. It's linked to the crypto.com app that has credit cards linked to it. It's a very strong exchange, and it's been around for a long time in crypto time um so and it's it's very down compared to what it was i mean it's been up to 59 cents or more so um, but this thing also is is a good example as to it was down and it wasn't even in the green zone when it hit on the tsi but now it's in the blue zone which is the over sold zone so don't misconstrue construe that we're saying that this is a great thing to purchase right now because we can't say that or or the opposite but i am giving you a warning to let you know that it is in the blue zone and and it's it's best to start at the floor so but this is where joe wanted to make certain that you guys understand that when all stars are aligned all indicators are aligned you know this kind of things will happen to reemphasize why the mana ethereum 
is so key to be watching something that is in this situation right now because if we take that vertical line and here's the early reversal and all those stars didn't align as much as that crypto.com coin did but following that early reversal you did have the key and now you have the tsi and now you have the signal line so good find joe and you know that's why you have to have more than one um chart overlay because each one of these chart overlays they're each uh doing uh a, they're looking for a different discovery they're each running different math equations trying to determine like is this a trend is this a trend and you need to have more than one because sometimes everything may come in at once and that might be just a, a just like an, an eclipse or a full moon and then the other times you may be put into a position where you have to it's more strategic to scale into your position and and that's why a lot of times you know you hear me say you can scale in 25 on the volatility 25 on the signal 25 on the tsi you know you don't have to go and put everything in on one trade i i always tell everyone you, you scale into your positioning you know it's no rush it's uh you come in here to play the game and uh you know we're going to uh try to position ourselves with the most odds in our favor to win this is all about odds and and that's the value of these tools is the odds that they put in your favor to be successful the odds over your competitor you know i i know uh friends of mine and not everyone has these tools right I, I got friends and they have their other tools that they trade off of but i can tell you they're not as good as me they get stuck in trades they make stupid mistakes so, you know so i'm yes. sorry to interrupt you but we have some questions and we're at the one o'clock hour so i just want to tell you what they are so we can quickly go through them and if anybody has to jump off we completely understand but just out of respect and I'm so glad you guys are finally talking after like an hour with us so next week make sure you jump in earlier um so we had a question and the reason why you're on this chart joe is because rob said can you explain why ethereum usd looked better on the four hour compared to the daily so to do that guys you can um actually you can go on to this little area and i could put those two charts next to each other so joe if you want to take that while i kind of look for the other questions and i'll have a four hour here and then i'll on my second chart i'll put the daily so you if you don't mind taking that that would be awesome joe well and that was rob that asked the way it works is each chart that each chart that you trade off of the closing is, is completed at the closing bar so when you're looking at a daily chart you actually don't know what that bar is until the close of today when you're looking at a four hour chart that's representing four hours before it closes so when the market starts to trend uh, if you can envision in here like the ocean you have these different waves you have small waves and then you have a big wave right so the small wave is the representation of that four hour chart that means that that trend or that wave may only last for a time duration of let's say the next three hours or next four hours and when you're looking at a daily chart that time duration of that trend you're looking at to last maybe two days or three days because the closing bar doesn't happen until 24 hours so it's a matter of speed that the market is moving and uh, you have to determine which wave works best for you um, for me personally the daily wave works best for me um uh the four hour chart is another good uh one that works well you know but the time duration is the only thing that changes so um if you're trading on a four hour chart um just be aware in there that uh it's a faster wave and uh you want to be uh, it's time sensitive over the next uh, every four hours when you get the completion of that bar because that's what that means that means it, it doesn't give a bar completion 
until four hours if you know so um uh you know after four hours if you're trading in there on this you want to check everything and make sure everything is uh working and if you're looking for uh numbers to print on the trend indicator um every four hours you'll get the completion of that number that's a good explanation sure. and right now you can see in there that uh, that four hour it, it is oversold on the tsi like we got our first green dot and uh, it looks like possibly the signal line is getting ready to cross. So it looks like, um, you know, that Ethereum in there may be turning. Yeah. And so you want to keep a, an eye on that for the next four hours to actually see if you get a, a bell print or a key, rather. As more as you, the more you get acclimated. To looking at multiple time frames and you'll see you'll you'll learn the music it's almost like this it's like you're learning how to read music and to see the emotional wave going through the world and there's something i did want to no notate today and it's that years ago i was taught that the charts are reflecting human emotions and this is not some hula hula thing it's actually seems to to rhyme true and it's just us analyzing them on a numerical basis joe is there anything you could comment on that it's just that it's always changing the fastest changing thing in the world are emotions and thus the charts but um i don't want to get into that because we have multiple questions but it's always moving and you're just basically trying to catch the fish take it and go for the another one all right so Gillard said, how many days do you give it a chance to confirm the trade before getting out of the trade? Well, if, if I'm positioning myself on the daily, like let's just say if we go to that mana, back to that. And he's saying, he's saying on daily trades. Sorry. Okay. I'll, yep, I'll go to mana. And that's really where you want so to be at. You know, you want to be on, you want to be on the the long, the longer term. I mean, you could, you could do the short term, but you got to have the stomach for it. It's like, it's like going to an amusement park, right? You know, like I don't really have the stomach for the roller coaster, but, but I do well with the animals, feeding the animals, you know? So, um, yeah, like if you're coming, you're getting your signal on the bell alert, right? Um, a good place in there. Uh, if you were going to look to put your stop loss would be below the old lows, right? Because that's what I do is the bell alert is generally the most, that's a final confirmation that the market is going in that direction. Second is, is that the next three days become the most important because that's the number count is already triggered with the bell alert. So right now, between now and the next 72 hours and today's Tuesday, that'll take us to Thursday. Uh, very important timing uh, as far as uh, the next numerical count. And ironically, that takes us right up until the report coming up on Friday. So it's uh, the next, uh, this, this may move before the report. And if it spikes up, be ready to take a profit. Because I can tell you now is that um, uh, it's always good in there to take a profit. And there's been so many trades in there that uh, you know uh, you have to be fast to get out of it because the market can reverse you know and uh, you can end up giving it back uh the profit you made especially when you're doing these crosses like for example susie right if you move that over to the um and i oh i, I know we're gonna we gotta get going i just wanted to so, show one of these spikes right if you go in there to the yeah. LSK, ETH. And this is a lot of the, the different coins that I do, um, which are in the pairs. And it's just, I try to um, go to the best opportunities. Like you see that spike, Susie, right? Yeah, right here. Yeah, and that's why you gotta take your profit. That's, the you know, 
that's just another another reason why taking a profit yeah. when you see it is good because you know it's it's uh any of these markets in there they they come they, you know, you get these spikes and you get these moves. And then if you didn't take your profit when it was there, now you gave it all back. And then the setup's different. It may come back down. Like anytime the market reverses like that, it, it, it just may go turn around the other way because they're doing these pump and dumps. Uh, good. Yeah, guys, exactly. Like if you don't take profit, don't count your eggs before they hatch. Because if you don't take it, then why are you in it? <laughs> but um yeah exactly unless you're doing a 401 crypto and you're you're going for 20 year stretch but he, with the regulatory systems these days that that 401 crypto process you know you, you got to hope that that crypto is still going to be along around in in uh, 5 days and meets the new regulatory standards and doesn't get attacked and so forth to figure you yeah. out okay well, next question. oh go ahead no no go ahead so so rob says is it possible that the daily can be oversold but the four hour is undersold yes but joe you answer yeah. that uh yes it could be you know uh when you're looking at the daily uh, there's a, you're talking about 24 hours before it prints another bar you know how much can happen in 24 hours Right, the first 12 hours it could be going up, the next 12 hours it could be going down, and then at the end of the 24 hours, not make a gain or a loss on the day. So, yes, it's uh, it can be overbought and oversold. The key is is to align those both up to the uh, technology. That's uh, that that's putting more odds in our favor to win if we're able to determine. And understand the time frames uh, and manage the information and process the information from the time frames. It, it's just more odds we can have in, in our favor to win. Uh, it's just a matter of which time frames are you looking at and are you good at processing the information? Which which you can do it uh, on here. Like I, the, the four hour and the daily. Uh, is really good looking at the daily every four hours and at some point in there it'll confirm you can also set your alerts and you can manage the two time frames by setting the alerts it's all about managing and processing information yeah and here here's the oh this is not the right one i was going to say um mana eth all right so we definitely should jump off now, but this is the four hour Ethereum purchasing mana, and here's the one day. So on the on the four hour, it's going down currently with the early reversal. And then the signal line was triggered. And then here's the one day. So with that being said, Joe, we're seeing this on the four hour average. Um, would you use the four hour average to predict that potentially that this belt may not continue to go up? I mean, it's just it's one four hour average. It doesn't, you know, I guess, let's see, August 1st. So it's already been changing. It's very volatile right now. So would you think that this is still going to continue to move up seeing this four hour average on Ethereum MANA? Well, right now, um, when you're looking at the when you're combining these these different time frames <clears throat> you're you know you would have to be anticipating what was going to happen the next 16 hours before the daily completes its bar print so you know you could do it right uh i would say when you are doing these time frames you're probably better off using a six hour a four hour and a six hour like for myself the reason why i use the dailies is because once i make a decision you know i don't have to micromanage it the rest of the day see, see it's really that's what really um it comes into when i say stomach the trade or what type of trader you are if you're okay with managing the trade then i'm going to say well every four hours set your alerts and every four hours you can be uh, aware 
of how the trade is developing, right? Because you're yeah. looking at the daily and you're looking at the four hours. So set your alert on the four hour, every four hours you manage it. If you have the time to do that, right? If you don't have the time every four hours to manage it, you know, um, maybe the six hour would work, you know, or that you, you really need to be on the daily. And, and, and really the, the difference is that, that I found is, is that, see, when I make a decision today, I don't change it five minutes from now. You know, that that's where I think it really comes down to is um, when you make the decisions on, on your, on your trade, you, yeah, grant you, like there's, there might be a line, a red line in the sand, like you put the trade on and everything went totally wrong and you might just lose. But at the same time, when you make decisions, you know, in this business, it's like being a doctor, right? Like the doctor cuts you open. You can't say, I, I, I forgot what I'm supposed to do. You know, you have to uh, follow through on your trade and uh, you have to determine what, what works for you. And, and for me, I'd rather make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis because I just don't have the time to micromanage um, that through the day. Yeah. And guys, to give you a heads up, the counter ban is saying that the potential next spot for Ethereum mana is at this spot, which is a 6.7% increase. So on the shorter time frames, you know, the counter and the averages, they're not super exciting. I mean, in stock, 6.78% is probably really exciting, but for crypto, the potential we have is so much more. So um, it's another reason why the longer term time frames is what I report on on the webinars when we go to like the one week chart too. So just know, get, get correct expectations of what the percentage increase could potentially be on a shorter time frame versus a larger time frame. All right, so we're closing. Is there anything special you want to say, Joe, or any guys um, out in the audience want to say right now before we jump off? Wow. Okay. Rob said, okay, makes sense. Thank you. Rob said, great follow up with Man Ethereum question to Joe. And Rob said, so if Joe is using the daily, then how many alerts need to line up to make an entry or exit? And then he said, sorry, how many indicators? And Richard said, thanks. So, Joe, do you want to take that last question and we'll jump off, I promise. He says, so, he said, how many indicators, well, Joe, does, well, would the you alerts can, in the down? Well, my, my answer to that is that you can set the alerts with all of the chart overlays or indicators. But the most important one that, that for me personally is the TSI. I try to catch the TSI, the first green dot, when it's coming down out of that oversold area, which is the green shaded area. That one there is real important. If the market, if the TSI is up at the blue, I usually pass and I let the market come to me. So I think the, the TSI is important. You can set your alert for that. The, uh, the ERI is important. You can set your alert for that. And, um, you know, and, and then also the, the trend. I mean, the volatility index, when you start to get to these shorter time frames, it, it depends on the volatility of the market. Sometimes it doesn't set up. So I would say on the shorter time frames, uh, I, would, I would be more focused in on the three, the TSI, the ERI, and the trend. All right. Thank you. Today was great, guys. I hope you learned a lot. We are so excited that you're here and we really appreciate all of your feedback. And Rob said, same for exit. So he's he's wanting to confirm. Um, you, I think what you just touched on, Joe, just to go back to the mana Ethereum entry, he's saying, okay, so he's going to enter or if he enters, then he wants to make certain that when it comes to exit, does he need to wait until the early reversal comes in to exit? Does he wait until the uh, the numbers stop printing to exit on the trend? And does he wait for the TSI to print red to get out and until the signal line gets into the red? Yes. You know, you can okay. set uh, you can set your alert in there for for the uh, signal line to exit. Right. You know, like your, your question is, is 
is is that is the is the rule does the rule apply for the same for the exit as it does to the entry? And the answer is yes. That you know, if if you're on the green TSI and that TSI turns from green to red, it's an excellent place to get out. If you're in the market in your position and the ERI shows a new red, it's a good position to get out. Okay? Your last threshold to get out, if you didn't get out, is going to be when that trend turns white. When all of the color stops, that's going to be your, your, your red line in the sand right there. Okay, so that, I'm just giving yeah. you guys verbiage on these charts. So exit, exit, and then the TSI is an exit when it gets to be red. Those are exit signs. Thanks, Joe. I love the, the red line in the sand. <laughs> Great. And this Great. one right here is a great one. And I know guys, we're gonna we're gonna hear it for being late. Sorry to keep you guys, but right here, there's that TSI. I love this one, red exit. So you know, if you move, if you lose, if you lose your your time or if you lose your focus on your your purchase, right? And you don't make these exits, then you gotta have some stamina, you gotta hold your breath. And even if you go underwater, you just gotta wait to get it back and don't know how long that'll take, but you're in it to win it. So you just gotta go long then or take a loss, take a tax deduction. <laughs> don't flip out, you'll make it back eventually, right? So exit, exit, exit. All those are great questions. I really appreciate all of them. Rob, Rob said, okay, thanks, exclamation point. Peter says, has my question been seen? Oh, Peter asked Joe for our email addresses. So Peter, we are working for Crypto Mastery and we do do training, but we have not been given the green flag to have direct contact with you guys outside of class. So I'm okay with you having my email, but you must ask customer service if that is allowed. And um, Joe is a a certified money manager and he does his own trading for a living full time. So, you know, Joe's time is extremely protected and he doesn't do one on one coaching. So I'm not certain if Joe's OK with his email being out there. Um, Rob said, excellent setup. Thanks. And Peter said, thank you. And you're welcome, Peter. We love you guys and we appreciate you. And we're open to communicating with you. At least I am. I know Joe's, Joe's time is protected. He is a programmer. He's a unicorn. Companies that have people like Joe's, they get 250000 a year. And they've signed on disclosures, non-competes. And they're never allowed to relieve or release these indicators to people as the hedge funds that I've worked for in, um, in Greenwich, Connecticut, which was the home of the hedge fund, you know, people like Joe are not allowed on the street teaching or giving these indicators to people. So I just want to let you guys know how important and how special he is to me and, and my profit of my por personal portfolio. And I'm thankful and grateful, Joe, to have you here. And I, I want you guys to know it's very, very rare to find somebody like Joe to come out of his cave of creation and to share this knowledge with you, it is not normal. So he is near and dear to my heart and into my portfolio, and he's the reason I'm successful trader. So um, again, I'm protecting his email, but um, I, I'm hoping that you guys can continue to come to class and and absorb his knowledge and continue to use his indicators as he's constantly making new ones. And um, it's been a great journey for the last five years. So. Glad to have you guys here. I'm glad to share Joe with you. And Gilead said, thanks, you guys, and you're welcome. And I'm going to sign off and say goodbye. Have a great trading week. And Joe, is there anything you want to close with? Uh, no, good luck trading, everyone. Thanks. And if you guys don't have the indicators and you're watching this on YouTube, go to CryptoMastery.online, and you can join us next week live. All right, guys. Cheers.